Okay, let's continue. Good times abound. Oh, hey, we finally get to play with Clement. Lovely. All right, in white we have Gates, Find, Omega, Cleric, Clement's very solid. Soldiers of the Watch is solid. Here's something on Watch is solid. Flaming Fist Officer is fine. Priest is fine. Rasad solid. Ranger Squadron's probably solid. That's not very deep white. Hmm. Okay, the blue cards. Is anything deeply appealing? There's two copies of Charmed Sleep. Juvenile Mist Dragon's fine. Signature Spells. This card looks bad. Like, if Charmed Sleep was a card that I could get with Signature Spells, I'd be more interested in it. But... You have to do, like, this weird thing where you only play good 3-drop spells and nothing else for it to whiff on. Alright, Black's looking probably deep. So Black has Shambling Ghast, Cast Down, Deadly Dispute, Prowler, Horde Robber, Stroke of Luck, Baconia, Mind Rot's Playablish if we need it, Slod, Imp, Spawn, Bounty, Sayervok. One of the weaknesses of Black is that it seems to be really powerful on the 2 to 4 drop slot, but then like has no decent playables above that point, <laughs> typically. The five and above slot in black at low rarities is kind of awful. But we do have Ancient Brass Dragon, which is not a good dragon, but is a seven power flyer for seven mana, which is respectable. Ah. <sighs> Okay, Red has Warcaller, which I dig. Rabble Rouser, three Goblin Captains. Okay. Although we actually had a lot of two drops in black already. Two Cell Swords. Young Red Dragon's fine. It's better with Warcaller. Hunting Party, very good with Warcaller, actually. That's a good combo. And Warcaller with Ancient Brass Dragon is also pretty good. You want to turn your entire graveyard every turn? Every turn? I mean, I guess. Like, it does sort of win the game, but I actually think this is less likely to win the game on any number of average rolls than the white one, and it has four less toughness than the white one for whatever reason. Like, rolling a five with the white Ancient Dragon wins the game. Rolling a five with Ancient Brass Dragon does not, like win the game. I think the white one is mostly the best in the cycle. I, I think that the only thing that you could use as a merit to compare against the white one is that the red one is one cheaper and still has a huge amount of power. But it's more of just a generically well-statted good creature, and it's connectability does not instantly win the game in the same vein. Okay, what do we have in green? We have Null Hunter. We have two wild shapes, which I guess is, like, kind of cute. Yuan T Scale Shield. Two and a green. Permanency control gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. Seek a creature card if an opponent has cast a spell with mana value three or less this turn. Huh, seek a creature card with no consideration towards mana cost. I feel like that's most, like, that's good enough to play if you're in green. Because it is still a combat trick that draws a card. But I don't think that because it's so expensive that it's, like, powerful enough to pull you into green. It's just a card you play once you're already in green for whatever reason. For what pulls us into green, we have Myconid. Muralists is pretty solid with Dragon. Two Owlbears, a Linoworm. That's reasonable. We have a Kalein, and I was already kind of getting pulled into red. And then we have the Mirror that doubles ETBs. 
which is solid with Kalein, I guess, and solid with Vampire, Spawn, and Pilgrim's Eye, and Nefarious Imp, but, hey, still kind of meh. All right, so War Caller, Rabble Rouser, all of our captains, Hunting Party, How much treasure production do we have? Kalein, Shambling Ghast, Grim Bounty. Sword of Horde Robber, but not really. Deadly Dispute. So we could be playing Jaded Cell Swords. We could also play Young Red Dragon as another treasure producer. We could splash Thrakus, which probably isn't worth it. I mean, we have two Pilgrim's Eyes, I guess. I'm kind of not entirely convinced that I actually care deeply about these Pilgrim's Eyes. The Acolyte is a good splash. I don't know if the Acolyte's a good splash. The trouble with the Acolyte and the trouble with, like, splashing as a general concept is you want your splash to be an impactful card in the late game, and Clement is a card who a lot of the power is tied up in being able to play it early. Like, yeah, this has Specialize stuff going on, but, eh. It's kind of eh. I don't think that's powerful enough to be worth splashing. More realistically, I think I just want to play these three with the Cobalt War Caller. I'm so uncertain on whether I actually want the Pilgrim's Eyes or not. I do think Thrakus is a reasonable card, but I also don't think that it's deeply impactful enough to be worth splashing when I'm already kind of cutting cards here. I mean, it does synergize with Young Red Dragon and Cell Sword to an extent, but it has to attack before it does that. Is the haste on the dragon rock valuable enough? I we don't really have five drops and six drops that it could give haste. Like I think if I was in green red playing like Ambitious Dragonborn, Muralists, Lina Worm, Butcher, then this haste would be a lot more appealing. But I don't see anything that's pulling me into those colors over what black offers. And I don't think that playing a ramp spell that costs an entire card is worth it to give these cards haste, especially when I've already got War Caller that threatens to be redundant with that. As tempting as it is to play the Horde Robber with the Ward Caller to try to get additional treasure production, and that is really tempting because that goes turn two Horde Robber, turn three Jaded Cell Sword. I think I have too many two drops, and I think that Horde Robber is probably the least good. Operating under the assumption that Hobgoblin Captain is pretty powerful, and honestly, probably still a better thing to play on two and give haste than the Horde Robber most of the time. I don't have a huge amount of three drops, but I could cut a Pilgrim's Eye for stuff that's more aggressive. Uh, I don't know if I buy that that's correct, though. Hmm. I 
I think I value Young Red Dragon more than Pilgrim's Eye in a deck that wants to be aggressive. I think I've definitely gone overboard on Pilgrim's Eyes, thinking that I'm just supposed to play every copy in previous decks, and had that not be as effective as I wanted in aggressive decks, especially aggressive decks that don't have a ton of late game. I, I think that has contributed to me feeling like I've flooded out in games, which in turn led to me to play more, like, very expensive cards in green, which consequently was not actually the most horribly effective strategy anyway, compared to just playing efficient low-cost cards. So I think that that gives me an indication that I'm probably supposed to try cutting the Pilgrim's Eyes. Is Nefarious Imp better than a Pilgrim's Eye, though? If that's the logic that I'm going to use. Hmm. I'm going to go with yes, we'll see. I'm not convinced that's correct, but I'm willing to experiment with that hypothesis. All right. Let's see. Oh. This is one black mana away from being deeply appealing. I really want to keep Cobalt Warcaller, but we are going to need more lands than that. Oy. Okay. All right. You know what? No. This is fine. Should I keep the Cobalt Warcaller? Probably should not keep this... Well, I don't know. So one of the points of interest somebody brought up about Stroke of Luck is that it does get a little better if your objective with Stroke of Luck is to hit land drops. That's a very interesting point. Well raised. There is a strong chance that you could draw two lands with it. I think I can just give Saravok haste next turn. I don't really need to play it this turn. Okay, so I could grab two swamps. I think we're probably better off grabbing the seven drop. That sounds like a lot more fun. No, we are not using the treasure. Guess I should have swung first. The sad part here is I like kind of want to use the treasure to play out Servok as a bigger creature, but I also want to use the treasure to play out Ancient Brass Dragon earlier? Hmm. Probably not supposed to make a Saravok slightly larger. So Saravok actually would connect this turn, but if I give haste to the Rabble Rouser, then I get to play two Rabble Rousers, and I think that's better than playing the Saravok. Whoa, no, Auto Tapper. That's not what we're doing. There's no point in attacking with Kalein. Did my opponent just use a treasure to play a Scaled Nurturer? I mean, I guess that mostly works, but I feel like that is something I'm happy about. No. Still not going to use the treasure to play my 2-drop deck. I have no creatures in my graveyard for the Saravok. My opponent has multiple Horde Robbers that really don't do anything against my board. Okay. So I could try to swing in a way that 
gives my hobgoblin captain first strike. I don't really want to do that. I think I'm actually doing a weird thing here where I swing with both rabble rousers and then play the Saravok post combat. The opponent can't actually block the rabble rousers effectively if I have four mana up. Although maybe I'm just supposed to hold more blockers back to respect the horde robbers and kind of ignore this two damage. I don't know. Could discard Saravac Discard the Hobgoblin to Saravac. Start giving stuff Menace? Doesn't seem the most valuable. Alright, how many cards does the opponent get to draw with you meet in a tavern? Three, including one card that they can't do anything with, and another card that's a bomb that they can't do anything with. All right, so we are now one land away from Ancient Brass Dragon's shenanigans. <sighs> The nice thing about discarding Hobgoblin Captain is it does give us something to bring back. I kind of feel like I'm just discarding the Hobgoblin Captain to Saravok here. For that reason, and for the fact that having First Strike lets me actually make an attack that's meaningful here. I wonder if there's a world in which I'm supposed to, like, incentivize them to triple block a Rabble Rouser. Just so that I can reanimate it with Ancient Brass Dragon when I hit another land? That's probably not a good idea. It is an option, though. Oh, this doesn't give First Strike, it just gives Menace. Okay, so they still have an incentive to triple block the Rabble Rouser regardless. Okay. Yeah, sweet. Oh, I guess their creatures being in the graveyard is also stuff that I can reanimate anyway. Although, notably, they have an unsummon that I'll have to be cautious of if they ever hold up blue mana at any point in the remainder of this game. I'm not sure how much they were relying on horde robbers to fix their colors of mana here for them. We now have two cards in the graveyard for Saravok. Oh, that's a bummer. Saravok really doesn't synergize with Ancient Brass Dragon, does it? If Ancient Brass Dragon empties our graveyard. Hmm. What significant win more problems we have? Now oh, there's a treasure, so now they're representing the wave. That's awkward. Meet Uncle Jack. Thanks for the follow. Glad you're enjoying the stream. So hopefully they get a white source and not a blue source here. Just because that'd make my life, life slightly less inconvenient. They get a black source? What? Okay. They need a double black source? For something? Ooh. No hunting party. Oh. That's a shame. I really don't want to use the treasure on that. Ah, shoot. Okay. All 
Or should I pump the Kalane? Possibly? Instead of the Rebel Rouser? That might be the case. I mean, yeah, they do have a card that needs double black in hand. I'm just operating under the assumption that the two good cards that don't cost two black are more worth fixing for than the bad black card that does cost an extra black. So if I pump the Rabble Rouser, I can't play the Hunting Party. I'm going to go with I don't think that that matters compared to playing the Hunting Party. Yeah, Bale Vobal Holder is mostly just a 6-5 that does nothing. Yeah, Armor of Shadows is the most likely card here, and also is probably why they actually grabbed the Swamp. That would make a lot more sense. Oh, well, okay, Deadly Dispute does also sort of make sense. It makes this a block? No, actually, hold on, that doesn't make sense. That this block is awful if the plan was to cast Deadly Dispute. No, stop, deck. Should I give this haste? Does that have any chance of mattering? I don't think so. Yeah. The awkward thing is if they've been counting, they do actually know that I gave a creature haste. Oh, I should be activating this every turn. To, at the end of their turn, to hide whether or not there's creatures in hand that I haven't given haste. I hadn't even thought about the fact that, like, if I do nothing with it, it lets them get accurate counts on the amount of haste creatures I've played relative to the number of times that I've activated Warcaller. Huh. That's a cool level up moment to think. Okay. <laughs> I don't actually think that's a problem. I mean, it gains them a lot of life, yes. But also they don't have another white source because they were using treasures for that. Hmm. No, still no. One of these days we're going to top deck a land. That'll be cool. So how are we handling this? I guess we're pumping the Hobgoblin Captain. Do I swing with the Saravok and trade with four 1-1s? One -ones? I guess not. No, I want the Null Hunting Party to cost less, so I do have to swing with three creatures. Which makes the question whether or not I swing with the Rabble Rouser, and if they do find a white source, I need to be able to block that horn. I mean, I would jump block with Kalane first before Rabble Rousers, wouldn't I? No, I mean, I, I want to be able to have some blockers on the back swing, like three, if they decide to just swing with every creature on their board. So I think that makes this correct. Could we have pumped Rouser to kill more tokens? Uh, I mean, if they block. I'm kind of expecting they quad block Saravok and not much else. Yeah. It should probably be relatively telling that I haven't used this treasure to pump any of my creatures that I have a large 7-drop in hand. Uh, okay. Well. Still mostly think I'm not horribly scared about what the opponent has in hand, or at least not what they have revealed. Owlbear. Yep. That draws a card. I cannot attack with Hobgoblin Captain at this point. 
but the Knoll Hunting Party continues to be absolutely bonkers on this board state. They can block it with their entire team, I guess. Nefarious Imp? No! That blocks my Brass Dragon. Wow, opponent. That's so deeply unfair. I mean, I'm definitely still going to kill it, but wow, that's deeply unfair. Do I do anything else here? I don't think any other swings make sense. Yep, that jump block seems appropriate. Do we put every creature on a null hunting party to trade with it? I don't know whether killing their 4-1-1s or the Owlbear would be better. I'm guessing killing the 4-1-1s would probably be better. Oh, that would give them... Oh, still only one scry. Oh, that's cute. Opponent blocks the first striker, so they get two scries. So, like, the unsummon's kind of annoying but Ancient Brass Dragon has haste, which makes it a lot less annoying. I've only got two red sources, so this Genasi can't actually attack into the Owlbear, inconveniently. Hopefully the opponent doesn't, like, cast a 7-mana board wipe that gives them 11 treasures, because that'd be pretty good. Viconia... Exiles... Okay, so they, they can get back a Nefarious Imp for chump blocking purposes here. <laughs> if that's their plan to hold off against the Ancient Brass Dragon for one more turn. Oh, or they could not do that? I'm guessing they just missed it. Because playing a random 6-5 does not accomplish terribly much here. Let's see. It's too bad I don't have a sacrifice outlet, or the Shambling Ghast would be allowing me to attack with my hunting parties. Well, whatever. How in danger of dying on the backswing am I here? I don't know. But anything that does three damage kills my opponent, which is probably pretty good. Whatever. We are going to call this the opponent's job to figure out. Yeah, you can't block the Shambling Ghast opponent. Okay. I'm kind of operating under the assumption that all of this stuff on my side of the board dying makes my Ancient Brass Dragon better. I just need to not look, roll a really low number. Let's see. Have I played a land drop yet? No, but that doesn't matter. Nefarious Imp is interesting. Low-cost cards are interesting. Kalein is interesting. So let's see. I mean, I could do six. Wait, is Kalein interesting? I don't actually care about the treasure. I guess I care about the treasure in the sense that it lets me recast Ancient Brass Dragon if they top deck a blue source. Pilgrim's Eye just does that, but better, right? Yeah, so let's just maximize the number of things we get that are lethal threats on their own. Wait, did I not get the 2-1 flyer? Oh, that was a mistake. I thought I snagged the 2-1 flyer. 
error. That was better than a pair of Hobgoblin Captains at the very least, I think. Yeah, that definitely did play out like the opponent was anticipating that they had a board wipe in their deck, which is a possibility. Was Saravok better than two Hobgoblins? Um, that might be a possibility, yeah. I could see that. Pilgrim's Eye gives us the ability to recast Ancient Brass Dragon for sure, but... I think the correct grab there is Nefarious Imp, Pilgrim's Eye, Hobgoblin Captain. Presents fewer lethal threats, but more deck thinning for good top decks. And then the scry is somewhat valuable, so if the opponent does wipe the board... I mean, if the opponent does hit the 7-mana board wipe, I don't think I can win the game. That's probably just unavoidable, but oh well. Let's see. Any desire for any changes whatsoever... I don't believe Demogorgon's Clutches is the kind of thing that I want to bring in at all. So no, I think we're good. I think I kind of have to keep this and just hope to hit a black source. We have a two drop that we're allowed to play, which is something. Okay, deck. You have done an awkward. I am obligated to not give the opponent a treasure. There's more treasure makers, so we kind of just have to draw a swamp or the game is over. We have drawn a mountain, so the game is kind of over. Deeply awkward. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Druid fixes our opponent's all mana problems. Yeah. They don't even have a planes to fetch? Or are they just valuing their not terribly good double black card again? Rough. Okay, well... I don't think we're winning this one, squad. Daddy fly goes pretty well. Not this particular game, but you know life. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, that's a problem. Oh, well, I am happy that they milled that mountain that I really didn't want to draw. So, okay, well, we'll get him next time. Horde Robber does start to become a little better on the play, but given the amount of two drop like, three toughness blockers our opponents demonstrated. I'm not ecstatic enough to actually bring it in. Okie dokie. We take the play. <sighs> so this end is interesting. We have a 48% chance to hit a land, and if we do, turn two stroke of luck fixes our mana problems pretty much for sure. I think I'm still supposed to mulligan it and hope for better. This is sort of better. Kind of. I'm probably supposed to keep the Deadly Dispute. Am I supposed to keep the Nefarious Imp? I think I'm supposed to keep the Nefarious Imp on the off chance that we top deck a swamp and not any other kind of land. So that I can still have something to play on turn three. No, okay. Top deck the on curve card, no problems whatsoever to be had. It'll be awkward if the opponent plays a 1 3 here that makes treasures, because then I won't be able to play the Nefarious Imp. I would have to play the 1 3 blocker instead. 
Alright, let me get our Nefarious Imp. If we miss the land drop, do I feel like I need to Deadly Dispute? I don't know. Yes, apparently. Attack, see if the opponent wants to block. If they do, do I Deadly Dispute? Okay, well, they don't want to block. I'll take it. And then we will Deadly Dispute. We will Deadly Dispute leaving up a mountain, so if the Deadly Dispute draws only mountains, we can still play our two drops. We get to Scry before a Deadly Dispute resolves. I don't want that. I want lands. And we draw a mountain. Perfect. Just like we drew it up. Could make a treasure with Young Red Dragon to get us closer to Ancient Brass Dragon. We have one creature in the graveyard. I think I'd rather play the Hobgoblin Captain than make the treasure here. That is actually a tiny bit close, though. I'm kind of operating under the assumption that I can attack with both of these this turn, play the Rabble Rouser, make a treasure next turn, assuming that I don't need to cast down something deeply concerning. If anyone wants to trade Nefarious in for my Hobgoblin Captain, I'm okay with it. Myconia. That's not great, and also isn't cast downable, and also kind of embarrasses my Brass Dragon. So I could cast down the Nefarious Imp to not give them any good blocks. Probably going to do that. Yeah, Deadly Dispute was what I was hoping they wouldn't do. Advantage opponent on the resource front. If they block and give us a scry, we can scry a land to the top and play Rabble Rouser, knowing that we don't need to make the treasure off of Young Red Dragon. If they don't give us a scry, do I have to not play the Rabble Rouser and make the treasure? Okay, they give us a scry. It gives us some information. Slod, huh? I don't think I'm supposed to want that. Are you legendary? No. Uh, that's concerning. I really don't think I can just jam the Ancient Brass Dragon off of two treasures next turn. My opponent's demonstrated at least one bounce spell, probably more removal spells. Uh, old Bear's awkward. So I could jam the Ancient Brass Dragon here, or I could make a treasure and play the Young Red Dragon. I think that there is a somewhat reasonable chance that I'm going to force them to commit to interaction with my air creatures here in a way that I hope means that they will have less interaction for the Brass Dragon. Maybe I'm supposed to just play out the Brass Dragon, but I really don't like doing that into six open cards. Okay, Minthara is not really meaningful. That's not scary. Opponent decides to attack with Owlbear. But I am most certainly winning the race, currently. Do I attack with Rabble Rousers? I think that's mostly free. Do I kill the Minthara if they block? Huh. The Minthara doesn't 
mean a lot to me here, but it's also like a treasure away from really flipping this clock. I think that I'm not supposed to play the Brass Dragon. I think that I'm supposed to kill the Minthara if they choose to block. If they don't choose to block, do I go for damage? I think the answer to that question was probably still yes. All right, now do we remove a, use a removal spell on the Rabble Rouser? We use a removal spell on the Flyer. I am so delighted by all of my choices that I have made. I'm not delighted by the fact that my opponent has a giant reach creature, though. That kind of invalidates my nefarious imp. Quite mean. Okay, here ya. Sure. Does the opponent play their big reach creature to invalidate my imp? Or do they want to hold up something else? Mm -hmm. No, they play big reach creature. Okay, well, that doesn't leave me a lot of options. Which mostly means we just play the giant creature now. Very simple creature? No. Okay, so I can't actually be cracking these treasures to scry if I need to at some point. If they decide to specialize the Jahiria, we can, assuming they make the mistake of targeting a treasure, fizzle the ability, but it's not the most likely that they will fall into that. It's also not the most likely that that's what they're going to bother spending this turn doing, considering it does not really affect the board very much, and they've been missing land drops while having a bunch of cards stuck in hand. Opponent mistaps for you meet in a tavern. Okay. I suppose I'm happy with that. Gets... Nothing relevant. Okay, so they're chump blocking with Ettercap. And we're trying to draw a removal spell for Edder Cap. They did sort of operate last game like they had the seven mana board wipe, so in that sense, I would not mind playing around it. They did, in fact, have the planes the entire time. That's fascinating. Okay. Should I attack with Rebel Rouser? Huh. Probably? How close to killing me with a Linoworm are they? Ettercap dies. Rebel Rouser only represents 6 damage, so it could be unblocked. I think we just swing with the Brass Dragon. I don't think we play the vampire spawn. Play, not playing the vampire spawn is an attempt to play around the seven mana board wipe. Given that they just put Linoworm in hand, though, I can't beat the seven mana board wipe anyway, so I'm probably just supposed to play into the seven mana board wipe. No. I don't actually buy that, but I do think that I was probably supposed to swing with the imp push through two additional damage. I didn't really care about the blocker. So that missed two damage was a mistake. None of these gain reach, right? Correct. Oh, but it can give something haste. Huh. Oh, but only if they have red. Oh, 
Well, that's good. The red one is the only one they aren't really likely to have, and it's the only one that's scary. Okay, Nurturer, but they can't tap it to gain life this turn. So I'm currently looking at Lethal if the opponent doesn't have a way to interact with any flyers. Horn. Okay. I mean, that's a lot of creatures and a very big attacking owl bear, but by no means is it big enough. No, a good opponent. I'll take it. Alrighty then. I am willing to just kill you. A 16! Woo! Fancy. Alright, let's go with my opponent's graveyard. And also my graveyard. And after I've gotten to have all of that fun... Oh, wait, 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 hold on. Trigger Minthara. I could get really cute with lethal here. I won't slow roll them. I mean, I'm already kind of slow rolling them. I could have specialized Viconia, discarding Vampire Spawn, specialized... Oh no, I couldn't, could I? Well, I mean, I could have discarded Vampire Spawn. I wouldn't have been able to get back. The Vampire Spawn? Right, no, okay. I could have exiled... Oh, no, I didn't even need Vampire Spawn because I was getting back by Kony. I was already lethal. Okay, right, 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 right. Vampire Spawn doesn't matter. Just having a swamp is good enough. As long as I didn't get rid of every card in every graveyard, which I guess if I had rolled a 20 was a mistake I could have made. Actually, I couldn't have because there was 22 mana worth of creatures. So exile a creature with Viconia. Specialize Viconia discarding literally any black card. I guess if I didn't have any black cards in hand, then I potentially didn't have lethal. But discarding any black card gives me a copy of the creature I exiled with Viconia that drains two on ATB. Could you respond to the specialized trigger to exile the spawn? Uh, I don't believe so. Oh, maybe you can, actually. Is Specialize a reflexive triggered ability? Not a... Because you activate Specialize, and then that Specialize ability goes on the stack before the creature actually flips. So this when this creature Specialize text is actually... I think that this came up on stream the other day, and I was wrong. Because when this creature Specializes doesn't mean when you activate Specialize, it means when the Specialize ability resolves, which is a really confusing... But yeah, I think this actually does work. So yeah, you can actually Specialize, and then activate the ability in response to the Specialize, and then the Specialize resolves, and you get a copy of the card. So yeah, you can totally get a copy of a card that you discard with Viconia by responding to the discard specialize with the exile ability. Okay, okay. So if I wanted to, I could have made a vampire spawn that drained for four, which was better lethal. <laughs> Don't think it does. Yeah, we can test that actually. All right, we get to be on the play. We get to keep a hand. We get to play Cobalt Warcaller on turn one? Oh my. Now this is just delightful as long as we hit another land. Hmm. Alright. I have 
not yet hit the other land, but that's fine. We're still off to an aggressive start. More or less on the nose than Catfolk from Pathfinder, but like, that's clinical. That's like trying not to giggle at the doctor using a, like, technical name for a piece of genitalia. Like, you know, it's whatever. Oh dear. My opponent has played turn two Prosperous Innkeeper into Shambling Ghast, huh? I mean, I'm, I feel like I'm pretty fine with that. Do you really want to play the Shambling Ghast and then kill my Cobalt Warcaller opponent? Is that the objective here? I did not think so. But if you weren't willing to make that trade, then shouldn't you have not played the Shambling Ghast at all? Oh wow, they don't even have a black source for that Shambling Ghast. I see. Truly, opponent, this is the most awkward of worlds for you. Hmm. Well, on the other hand, I am still missing a land drop. That is not great for me. Now, the second we hit a land drop, we get up to four lands, which works well for Jaded Cell Sword, I suppose. Hmm. If I activate Cobalt Warcaller here, what am I supposed to give a haste to? Because if I miss a land drop and I don't draw a two drop, I'm probably just going to cast Mill 4. And I think that I should get the slot exiled with haste. Okay, am I attacking with Kalein here? It does give the Hobgoblin first strike to do so. They kind of just trade with the Kalein, but then I don't have to kill the Shambling Ghast. I can just kill the Innkeeper. More likely, they throw the Ghast in front of the Hobgoblin and kill the Hobgoblin that way. Yeah, I think I want to attack with Kalein. Otherwise, I can't attack with the Captain into the Prosperous Innkeeper. It's a tiny bit disappointing to not keep the clane around to, like, pump a jaded cell sword, but it's probably fine. Okay. So they block the Viconia, and then they're going to kill the Hobgoblin Captain with the ping, most likely. Oh, they might actually make the treasure. No, if they were making the treasure, they would... Oh, okay. Sure. I feel like they should have blocked the Hobgoblin Captain. In that case. Maybe they think they don't care because they can kill with the Shambling Gas later? I don't know. Still sort of sitting here hoping we draw land eventually. The sooner or later we do have an issue if we never draw land for the rest of the game. That is true. They could have done that in a way that kills Kalein and only takes two damage. But doing so loses them their entire board and also doesn't make a treasure, which I don't think is what they wanted to do. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, actually, because of the first strike, they don't lose the innkeeper in that case. What? Why? What? Okay, so they're untapping a creature as a 3-3. Three, three. That's inconvenient. We, on the other hand, have missed a land, so I'm not going to be able to play the Cell Sword as a 5 power for Striker like I would like to. Hmm. 
inconvenient. All right. Well, I think the plan then is to play a hasty pilgrim's eye. Am I willing to sacrifice my Kalein here to get through three damage? I believe so. I think it's worth it, because if I don't attack with Kalein, I can't attack with the Hobgoblin, because the Hobgoblin wouldn't have first strike. I mean, I guess I could just trade. Nah. Nah. Trading the Hobgoblin with a Shambling Ghast, which kills the War Caller, sounds like kind of a bummer. Doing five damage while I have a two power flyer is pretty cool. They are going to be continuing to gain life with the Prosperous Innkeeper, though. That part kind of bites. Monster Manual. Not even drawing cards, they just want to put a card into hand with that immediately? It's a little concerning, isn't it? Uh, do I block here and make a treasure so I can play Cell Sword with haste? No. I think I'd just go for lethal, actually. because I kind of forgot about the part where I just could, like, kill my opponent because I have a four-power haster. Or a different four-power haster. We'll go for different four-power haster. This attack with the Shambling Gas, after showing Empty Hand on my opponent's behalf, seems kind of insanely optimistic. Okay, well... We didn't really need our third land until, like, turn five, but it was good enough, I guess. <laughs> oh, dear. That was moderately silly. Cobalt of Warcaller has been such an impressively good card. Just so very good. Um, all right. This is adequate, I think. I'm still not sure whether we're supposed to lead on Guildsworn Prowler or Hobgoblin Captain. I guess on the draw, Prowler is probably better. There's a lot of things a green opponent could be playing on three that Hobgoblin Captain does not attack well into. The two forger Druid, the three drop that is a Mana Dork and makes a 1-1. One, one. I guess the... Well, cast down? Does that change the context? I still don't really want to cast cast down on turn three. Okay, Prosperous Innkeeper is excellent against both of my cards, unfortunately. I guess it's worse against Prowler, though, because at least Prowler draws a card. Not currently looking at any good th turn three play, unfortunately. Mostly just going to be playing a two drop, which is underwhelming. Okay, Underdark Basilisk doesn't really matter. I mean, it might matter eventually, but... Oddly enough, the Prosperous Innkeeper essentially has Death Touch already, so... Kinda all the same. What? Okay. <laughs> I guess I'll trade with their Basilisk rather than their Innkeeper? Hmm. 
That seems like a suspect block. I'm not sure I agree with the idea that Prosper's Innkeeper is more valuable than a Death Toucher. I mean, it still has Death Touch for Hobgoblin Captains, specifically. Deadly Dispute. Well, that could be useful eventually. Seravok doesn't really allow the Hobgoblin Captain to attack. I'm assuming my opponent's like on Arcane Archery here, but I wasn't able to attack into the Innkeeper regardless of Arcane Archery or not. Or maybe they're on some kind of Flash thing. Eh, maybe they're just on a removal spell. Which they would have an incentive to use on Saravok unless it was a five mana removal spell and they wanted to hold on to the treasure. Or they could just not have had anything that cost five mana. Or less. Which would make Druidic Ritual the top deck, I guess? Yeah, okay. I get a Black Dragon, which is very good against Saravok, unless I specialize it now. Linorm was an option, but like leaving up Linorm when I'm going to attack with a creature that kills Innkeeper, even if they Linorm, doesn't really seem good. Like, it's an option that they could have had, but it would imply that they had nothing else they could have played. I'm flabbergasted that they didn't get back the Black Dragon. That kind of implies very strongly that they either... Well, I guess it implies they don't have a land, but really they probably should have still grabbed it even if they didn't have a land. They must have... Or they could have some really powerful bomb that they're focusing on with muralists. Hmm. Okay, so we chump block the smaller creature. Of the two? Okay, so they did in fact have arcane archery. Um, yeah, I'm not really interested in that resolving. Let's see. Well, I guess we hold a vampire spawn. So I guess their logic was they didn't want to grab the 7-drop because they were planning to use the treasure to cast Arcane Archery. Which makes slightly more sense to me. Hmm. I kind of want to save the Grim Bounty for whatever they're going to get with Draconic Muralists. I want to hold up Deadly Dispute. I want one more card in hand, because I want all four of these cards. So that I can, like, discard a card to Saravok, have the treasure to give Jaded Zellsword haste. I want to discard a red card so that I can attack with Vampire Spawn. Oh, this only costs three, not four. Sweet. Okay, so I can just discard the Mountain... I do have exactly enough cards to do everything I want to do. I don't want to kill the muralists and then attack with everything, because that results in the opponent having a dragon that they get to tutor that might be some kind of bomb and I don't have an answer to it. Hypothetically. This sequence does the maximum amount of damage. Well, I mean... It doesn't do the maximum amount of damage, but it does two less damage overall, I think. They're, oh, they're only getting Linoworm? I really don't know that I 
understand them getting the muralists back instead of the black dragon in that case. Okay, but still, I've got the bounty, so I win. That works. Oh, first strike. All right. Well, okay. I'm not entirely sure about a number of the choices the opponent made there, but deck with low curve and aggressive options beats deck with very expensive cards. Prosperous Innkeeper versus Underdark Basilisk sequencing was still a little weird, but given that we ended up using a cast down on the Prosperous Innkeeper, I suppose it didn't affect the game at all. All right, so limited mana on the draw, but we've got a two drop, we've got a good card, and we've got some curve fillers. So I am prepared to top deck cards that are, you know, playable. I was really hoping we were going to top deck our Haste Goblin on turn one. But for some reason, we can't seem to do that every single game reliably. Bummer. Ugh. All right. Soldiers of the Watch is annoying. Guess we go with the Guild Sworn Prowler so that if they play Soldiers of the Watch on turn three, I can attack into it and make a trade that's more acceptable than Hobgoblin Captain. Do not want to block with my Guild Sworn Prowler. It's weird how Soldiers of the Watch on turn one feels excellent, but like. It's a lot less scary if your opponent actually plays the Soldiers of the Watch token on turn three. But that said, Viconia is good, but... It does not stop Guildsworn Prowler from actually attacking. And we get to play our Vampire Spawn that invalidates the Soldiers of the Watch. So that's nice. The black, blue, green, red, and white dragons are selfish, evil, and feared by all. Ooh. Okay, I feel a little called out. <laughs> they chose specifically those colors, huh? There's no, like, orange dragons? Or <laughs> purple dragons? It's just Wooberg dragons, huh? What are we sacrificing? I guess Guildsworn Prowler? Oh, have they already selected Soldiers of the Watch? Is that what it's telling me? I mean, it's probably still... I want to block their two damage. Hmm. All right, well, I guess we play our four three. I can attack with Cell Sword, trade with something, and then play Knoll Hunting Party at the moment, which is fine. Cell Sword trades with probably Viconia is worse for me than Chain Devil in the long run, I'm guessing. Okay, well, that's a bunch of creatures, but not a bunch of creatures that are, like, deeply shifting combat math here. Okay. Trading with the Chain Devil is fine by me. That gives us a null Hunting Party, which we hope the opponent does not have a removal spell for. If they have a removal spell before I get to attack with null Hunting Party, then the Viconia is going to be... A very serious problem, because it will get back a fully double-team-ready Knoll hunting party. 
No removal, opponent. No removal. That would be mean. So no removal. Iconia also kind of invalidates our slot. So that would be a bummer. Disciples. Okay, I do not feel like the opponent is actually ahead enough for Disciples to scare me. It's kind of tempting to swing with the spawn so that I could cast down the Disciples. And still play the hunting party. I actually do need to do both those things. I want to give them the opportunity to, like, block with Disciples plus Soldiers. No. I do it this way. That's a bummer. Okay, so they don't risk exposing the Disciples, but we still do trade the spawn, which is more or less fine. When am I supposed to cast down? If they had topped, that would be an easy choice. I'm definitely supposed to cast down before they disciples attack. I don't know whether I'm supposed to do it before or after the draw, though. Huh. Well, at the very minimum, I think I give the opponent the opportunity to tap out of her protection spell by activating Viconia. Okay, yeah. If nothing else, doing it while they're completely tapped out is worth not caring about giving them the advantage of scry timings. So we still have Viconia making our slot not the best. We also have the downside of if they decide to specialize, they get back a double drain vampire spawn, which is really mean. Instead, they choose to play a land, implying that they want that much mana. And then they discard a creature. And they get their double drain vampire spawn. Which double drains. Yeah, all right, that's mean. Ooh, okay, Ancient Brass Dragon is cool. It's actually not very good against Viconia, continuing the trend of my opponent's Viconia kind of answering all of my stuff. It's really quite rude that they keep doing that. Hobgoblin Captain gets mostly invalidated by Viconia. So I guess, do I want to play no blockers? Hmm. I could make a treasure and play the young dragon, which doesn't really line up super well against the imp, and opens me up to taking seven, which is dangerously close to dead if the opponent plays some kind of flicker effect on the vampire spawn. I think we're just hobgoblin captaining. I don't think I'm supposed to play the treasure half of this. I think I'm just supposed to play to the board in a way that is as mana efficient as I can manage. Oh yeah, I mean this card would still be very good if it had double strike, but it is Really, really good with double team. Okay, the Ranger Squadron kind of invalidating Young Red Dragon, but Land Draw kind of uninvalidating Ancient Brass Dragon. And that's the important part, I think. So if I attack with everybody, they chump block Hunting Party. the spawn. That's not really gonna work. 
So I guess we just hold back Hobgoblin Captain as a blocker. And hunting parties get in there because 4-4s four with first strike are good. Oh, stack block. Really? Can't say I expected that. All right. Well, I'm probably not supposed to give them the Ranger Squadron then. So they're down to four. They do get to scry. That's true. They put a card on top. They put a card on top, huh? I'm going to operate under the assumption that it was a removal spell for the Knoll Hunting Party that kills the Ancient Brass Dragon, and I'm going to operate under the assumption that it wasn't a board wipe, which makes my life very sad. I wonder if I could have swung with Young Red Dragon there. Oh, okay. Well, whatever they topped was not good enough to answer Ancient Brass Dragon, it would seem. <laughs> okay. So... Are we now swinging with everything? Block Hobgoblin, jump block, jump block, go to one. Don't believe there's any benefit to swinging with Hobgoblin here. This double block doesn't accomplish anything unless they have a protection spell. Hmm. Okay. I don't want to put the Vampire Spawn in the graveyard, specifically because if they have a Resurrection spell, I don't want to give them the life gain. And they've demonstrated one Resurrection spell so far. I believe we play the Cobalt. I don't know whether I play the Slod. Card on top, huh? So we have a blocker. I'm uncertain how much I'm supposed to play around a board wipe. I'm going to play around a board wipe. Rasad answering Brass Dragon, huh? And then Flyer. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's extremely good. Can we mill four creatures to get Menace? No, we cannot. The Viconia continues to be a rather incredible problem. So currently the Slod trades with Vampire Spawn. Huh. Well, I believe that I want to make this trade, because I can't block with Young Red Dragon anyway. Howdy, Gnome Skull. Thanks for the raid. How went the stream? Yeah, they just have to block with the Hippogriff. Am I supposed to play the slot here? I'm going to assume I'm not supposed to. Now that they have Rasad in play, Board Wipe is much, 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 much weaker. I think I play the slot. I don't know that there's any real benefit to, but I might as well. Okay, yeah, they could just top deck one of the best bombs in the set. Uh, sure. We'll keep doing this, I guess. Okay. Well, I'm pretty close to dead next turn, then. I don't know that I have that many more, like, flyers or anything. So what? Mill five. Well, that's not helpful. 
I'm not really looking for a land. Oh, I shouldn't have played the land. I want to discard it to the Ceaseless Torment. So our graveyard is gone, which makes the slots pretty bad. Our opponent has had so many turns in a row of barely hanging on. Hold on to the adventure on slot? Mm. I don't think Saravok ever gets us there because they have Lyconia. I mean, I guess if they attack and then tap out. What do we have left in the deck? There's a Pilgrim's Eye, and a Nefarious Imp, and a Viconia. Uh, well, the Viconia doesn't get us there, actually. Because we don't have a card to discard. Oh, but we would have if I had held on to the mountain. Mm, okay, yeah, playing lands out. Really bad idea. Cell Sword, huh? Guess I'm supposed to play it and pay three life? So that leaves us with Pilgrim's Eye. Oh, I could have kept the Jaded Cell Sword in hand to make the Viconia work, and then still paid the three life. Block, block, block to stay alive. No, that really wouldn't be a good idea. I need more blockers than that. I mean, I guess they can't let me, well, well this doesn't fly anymore, right? So they can let me kill the Rasad. Humiliation, okay. So this makes me lose the war caller, but requires them to have a blocker. Or a hippogriff, okay. Hmm. Oh, no, Viconia is not an out because they have a Viconia. Yeah, okay, well. Uh, I guess my opponent had like seven turns in a row of perfect outs. That happens sometimes, I guess. Well, no changes. I feel relatively favored against them, so that's good. We'll take the play. Is this a keepable hand? Not really. But maybe? Okay. I mean, I don't want a mulligan. That's not good and limited. We'll just top deck good cards and call that fine. Or lands. That's an option too. So, either Indestructibility or Patriarch's Blessing in hand. Oh. Alright, it's gonna be one of those matches, eh? <laughs> Wait. So this, folks, this is why you don't concede when you miss your third land drop. My opponent missed their third land drop on the draw and then conceded. <laughs> uh, whenever you find yourself thinking about what your outs are because you're getting unlucky, 
and it's difficult to imagine winning, remember that your opponent might be getting just as unlucky as you. <laughs> oh my, okay, well. You know what? I'll take it. Didn't we just miss our fourth land drop and concede an hour ago? Uh, I don't think so. That doesn't sound like me. Didn't we miss our third land drop for like four turns in a row and still won that game? That sounds more like me, to be honest. Oh, I would be so deeply down to keep this hand if it had a red mana. This hand's good though. I think I like Stroke of Luck. Oh, oh, Genasi Rabble Rousers, that is deeply good timing. Thank you very much. Hmm, right, the one where we had no castable spells in all mountains and we're, like, dying on board after multiple turns. No, wait, didn't I concede that when the opponent had, like, lethal? I don't think that's necessarily too early. Maybe I'm misremembering, but I feel like the opponent just had a board state that there was no combination of cards in our deck that was capable of beating at that point. Speaking of, our opponent is not really doing anything, which is delightful. Also, they missed a land drop, so that's cool. Oh, my poor vampire spawn. My poor two-power creature. Opponent, how could you kill my two-power creature like that? We gonna kill the Hobgoblin Captain opponent? So if I pump the Rabble Rousers at sorcery speed, I can give the Captain first strike to attack through the Imp? Okay, Bone Caller Cleric. Don't really care about that. Yeah, so I guess for the sake of doing maximum damage, we're just pumping this Rebel Rouser at sorcery speed. Post-combat, I'm probably going to Stroke of Luck. I think the opponent's life total is too high for it to be correct to pump the Rebel Rousers again. Okay. Give the Bone Caller Cleric indestructible, but I cast down it in response so that they lose the Hippogriff and the Cleric? That sounds good to me. I respect the opponent for trying, though. Still nothing, eh? All right. Well, that also still works for me. So we can Pilgrim's Eye, get a third red source to fix for triple Genasi activation. Activate Genasi at sorcery speed and then attack with Hobgoblin Captain through the Nefarious Imp. Continuing to chunk away at our opponent's life total. Yeah, okay. Captain down. Opponent's life total continuing to drop. I've not invested a ton of mana into successfully killing my opponent's life total, but... Yeah. Or into developing my board, but we've made effective trades, so that's fine. Rabble Rouser activate, Rabble Rouser activate, deal damage, kill opponent's stuff. Then we get to play War Caller, which is fun. We've kind of just been chilling with this stroke of luck in hand, absolutely never having a turn where we get to use it. No, 4-4. Four, four. Gross. Hmm. Am I just supposed to stroke of luck for a land here? 
and then give Young Red Dragon haste and attack? That seems like probably what I'm supposed to do now that I have a giant flyer. Or we could entirely whiff on the lands, which is a tiny bit awkward. Oh, but all these cards are so good, though. Hey, Darkest Mage. Thanks for the raid. How do your stream go? Oh, dear. Oh, wait, so I only get to take one of these, huh? Hmm. I guess of those, Kalein is probably the best one. I don't know. We'll go with the Hasty Flyer, though. Seven and two into four and three and sealed. Charm sleep is so bad. Yeah, like, I agree. Charm sleep isn't even very good. And the sad part is I think it's one of the better blue cards. I, I have had, like, I don't think I've had a single pool that it felt correct to play blue. I've tried playing blue, and I have only regretted it. Uh, I keep getting tricked by, like, hey, this blue card seems like a bomb. I should probably try to play it but it's never worth it. Just haven't been able to fill out an actual curve with functional blue cards. Yeah, Young Blue Dragon, like... <sighs> On the face of it, Young Blue Dragon is, like, a good card that I would want to play in other colors. The problem is, Blue's problem is that it doesn't have good two and three drops that fill out a curve. And so, like, it's the color that least is capable of spending its turn to doing young blue dragon things because you can't, like, play a solid three drop easily to make up for the tempo loss. But, like, yeah. I guess in that sense, if you don't have good two drops, then a good two mana adventure is hypothetically a good curve filler. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And even then, all the uncommons are, like, good in the four and five mana range, right? Lizards are decent. Is... Are the lizards decent? Or are, like, the lizards... I guess of all the blue cards, they do, like, the best job of making up for having medium two and three drops, but, like, you play it on four, and it holds the ground pretty well because four toughness is a solid place to be in this format. But, like, you don't want to attack with them and get the double team value because you're not actually pressuring your opponent's life total. And also, like, then you're playing, like, a four drop on turn five, and also all of your early curve sucked. So, like, you have no point in the game in which you're playing stuff on curve and good. Uh, yeah, no. Mostly, I just continue to have no desire whatsoever to play blue. But I think I've probably been biased towards trying to build pools as fast as possible with the best sort of two and three mana options that I can get. Uh, sand is close to tempting on the draw. It's limited, so don't mulligan. Oh, sweet. Never didn't have it. Cobalt Warcaller is rapidly becoming, like, my favorite common in the set. It's not the best, but it is rapidly becoming my favorite. Oh, really, opponent? I get to kill your Viconia for my common? Sweet. Yeah, that's kind of a problem. Retrieve Socks. He just took off not too long ago to go get food. He was chilling on the bed up until then. Hmm. Okay. Well, I guess I get to get in for one because the opponent isn't going to want to trade their bronze walrus with my shambling ghast. So hasty ghast gets in. Am I supposed to cast down a bronze walrus? 
Probably not. What are the odds they play a legendary creature that, like, I can't kill, that I regret not killing the walrus? What are the possible odds? All right, well, Owlbear Shepherd isn't something that I want to kill. <sighs> Shoot, so now they have the Sacrifice spell? Hmm. Yeah, maybe I should have just done this. I could just not, though. Like, what, they trade the Bronze Walrus with my Jaded Cell Sword? No, oh, hold on, that actually does suck. Oh, dear. Yeah, okay. I don't think I can jam the cast down into a potential sacrifice spell getting held up there. I can't attack with a Shambling Ghast into the Owlbear. Well, attacking with a Shambling Ghast and sacking it to the Owlbear gives me a treasure, which progresses towards Ancient Brass Dragon and gets four damage in. Okay, that's acceptable. It's not good, but it's acceptable. Okay. This was the other option. Where the Shambling Gas just does one damage, so the attack was still correct. Oh, it's just Ghost Lantern. Oh, alright. Well, decisions thoroughly regretted. I still don't really feel like this card is playable, so I feel like it's continuing to be correct not to play around it and to assume that they have the sack outlet there. But now I have the sack outlet. Fun. Okay, so the opponent plays nothing. What does that imply? That they have the ability to give the Owlbear Shepherd plus two plus two counters? I believe that is what that implies. So when they use it at the end of turn, I get to fizzle their Linnhorm with cast down? I can live with that. And the Cobalt Warcaller represented... Yeah, that is exactly what happens. So they kind of had to hold that up, even though I didn't have an onboard attack, because the Cobalt Warcaller represented a hasty attack. That worked out well for me. Wand of Orcus. Okay. Can't really profitably attack with a Shambling Ghast. If they can equip the wand and then kill my Ghast? They get two zombies and that makes me kind of unhappy. That's probably still fine. Attacking with Viconia... Well, the one damage is kind of free because even if they kill the Shambling Ghast, I'm not going to chump block the Viconia and lose my Viconia just to deny them a 2-2, two -two, or to deny them two 2-2s, two -two I guess. Although I do represent double blocking, trading Viconia and Ghast for Viconia if they try to go for the attack. Huh. Is that worthwhile? I guess that's probably worth one damage. Or worth not getting one damage in this spot. So they do go for it. So does this mean a removal spell on my Viconia? I mean, I'm definitely willing to make this trade. Yeah, okay, so and if they do have something, then I still get a Deadly Dispute. Oh, it gains Trample. Oh, shoot. Okay, I'm kind of... Like, turbo blown out by this, huh? Oh, and it's got Death Touch? Wow, that's like the best possible last card, eh? Okay, so they get three zombies. Well, I might still be able to win here. I don't think I Deadly Dispute sacking one of these things. 
in order to deny them an extra zombie. And I believe we are sacking... Is Rabble Rouse or worth a Cobalt Warcaller at this point? Cobalt Warcaller probably has more upside. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm supposed to sack Cobalt Warcaller, so there's a one drop in the graveyard, which gives us more flexibility in terms of what we can get back with Ancient Brass Dragon. There's our land. Okay. Let's play our hasty 7-6. Keep our blocker. And then high roll. 12 is good enough. Alright, let's see. One drop, one drop, seven drop, three drop. So what if I don't get the war caller here? What if I don't get the shambling ghast? Am I supposed to get Lyconia? Am I not supposed to get the linen worm? What happens if I don't get the linen worm? Get the walrus. We get Lyconia. We get a hobgoblin. Is that better than linen worm? I think going wider is better against repeated death touch. Warcaller might be worse than Shambling Ghast. Probably not with Null Hunting Party, right? Well, Null Hunting Party's a 6-drop if we play it pre-combat with Haste, so that's actually not terribly appealing. Because what if we don't get Warcaller and get the Shambling Ghast and this Captain instead? Oh, I can still get Warcaller. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, let's go with everything then. Saravok sounds fun. Mountain also sounds fun. Hmm, which is more useful? I guess I just actually emptied my graveyard, so probably not the Saravok. Also, they have a Viconia, so definitely not the Saravok. Oh, I'm getting both because I'm drawing cards. Right, cool. Okay, opponent. <laughs> Your wand play was very cool. I do feel like my play was better. <laughs> uh... Wow, Cobalt War Caller is really cool, huh? <laughs> Good times. Good times. Yeah, no changes. Oh, I should probably have actually switched my land ratios to have one more red source and one less black source, huh? Do you think the Ancient Brass Dragon sounds more like a trumpet or a French horn when it attacks? I don't really know the difference. Sonically? Also, I don't know that I've actually caught the audio on my end. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, in that situation, Ancient Brass Dragon having haste with Cobalt War Caller was very good. But I mean, even independently of that, the part where it gave Ancient Brass Dragon haste while it was already dead is, like, such an upgrade over previous iterations of that kind of card that, like, tapped to give a creature haste. Oh, which it would sound like. Oh, I see, because the name. All right. All right, I follow you. I get your joke. I needed to have it explained to me, but I respect it. <laughs> How much has the opponent completely redone their deck, given the amount of time they spent in sideboarding? Can I get your opinion on something? Warcaller versus Reckless Ringleader. Ringleader is a goblin. Perpetual haste on ETP. Only historic legal. So the Reckless Ringleader is a 1-1 one -one with haste that gives haste to a card in your hand when it ETBs, right? So we have more swamps than mountains. This hand is pretty reasonable if we hit the mountain. We're on the draw. I think it having haste makes Ringleader probably better. But it is interesting that Warcaller can give haste to something you top deck, whereas Ringleader can't while in play. <sighs> I th this is really close. 
I think we can do better than this on average on six. I think this was us having successfully done better than that on average on six. I believe that I'm getting rid of either Nefarious Imp or Slod. I don't know which one. It's probably getting rid of the Slod. Guildsworn Prowler does not make me terribly happy, but finding lands does. Do not want to block the 2-1 with my 3-1. Oh, Underseller Myconid is deeply, 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 deeply good against me. Troublesome. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm definitely getting out tempoed now. The downsides of being on the draw. Drider? Oh my, I'm getting dridered. All right, let's take the two swamps. That seems pretty beneficial. Could choose to block this Prowler, but there's always the possibility. So if they have the Arcane Archery, I kind of just lose here, but eh, I can't play around it. Yeah, they do. All right. I don't really need a Mountain right now. Well, there's a mountain. That is what I was looking for, so that's cool. Ugh. How do I be not dead here? I think the opponent kind of had lethal by swinging with everything. In all likelihood. Or pretty close to it. Definitely don't want the swamp. That's more creatures. Vampire spawn a start? No. If I had one more mana, it would be, but... Well, no, actually, Young Red Dragon can't block. So mostly we're just dead. Good game opponent. Oy. Play versus draw really is a big difference in games like that. Okay, let's try not to mulligan this time. Do I have any interest in space? Have I seen the recently released space telescope pictures? I have seen some of them, although I don't think that I've like actually clicked through to see the super high resolution versions. I have an interest in space. I guess I probably have more of an interest in like the physics of space than the imagery of space though. And even that's only like passing. Physics are cool. Space physics are also really complicated. <laughs> I guess I don't actually know if I have, like, an interest in real underlying physics so much as, or more so an interest in, like, not pop culture of the physics, but popular science of the physics. I'm, uh, I'm legitimately unsure on that. I do find it neat, though. All right. 
right, so Rabble Rousers gives us some stuff to do on Curve. Helps make Hunting Party good eventually. Bonin not having black sources for turn two is definitely neat. Cell Sword's not the best three drop, four drop. Oh, wait, no. But Null Hunting Party is a very good four drop. <laughs> oh, Null Hunting Party is a delicious four drop. Thank you, deck. No blocks, opponent? Radical. All right. Well, they have fixed their colors, so they can kill my hunting party. I can play Pilgrim's Eye and hold up activation for Rabble Rouser. What are you? 3-5. Draw a card, then exile a card from your hand and put a number of time counters on it equal to its mana value. It gains when the last time counter is removed from this card. If it's exiled, you may cast without paying its mana cost. If you cast a creature spell this way, it gains haste until end of turn. Okay, so suspend a card from your hand with... Time counter is equal to his mana cost. Then remove a time counter from each other. Oh, okay. Well, that last line of text is quite a bit better. Okay. I see. Well then. Dear me. That's going to be a problem. It's actually such a problem that I think I'm supposed to fix for our mana with Grim Bounty. to prevent that from being activated more than once. Can I attack with the Rabble Rousers here? I guess sacking a Rabble Rouser is probably worth pushing through damage. I wonder if I should have played the Pilgrim's Eye first so that I could have actually used this extra mana to deal one additional point of damage. Well, now I can activate the Slod. Maybe that's still fine. Card is a trap. The cards you exile with time counters don't have suspend. Oh, they don't gain suspend. I see. That makes a very, very large difference. Very good point. It does still loot and has a lot of toughness, though. So it does still kind of have to go for the sake of our hunting party. This turn? Yeah, this turn. So because this is going to make a treasure, I can choose to sack the Rabble Rouser to play a hunting party this turn. So our opponent exiled a Dryder. Understandably. Do we sack the Rabble Rouser? Does that seem correct? I mean, hunting party is a beating. I think it's actually worth it to sack the Rebel Rouser to develop the hunting party here over everything else. Yeah. No, my hand. I needed that for casting cards, opponent. All right, well, hunting party down. The opponent's got two turns worth of chump blocks with the Myconid. Our slot is online with Death Touch Menace. That bit's cool. 
Yeah, their plan is to just jump lock with Mike in it and race. Not an unreasonable plan. Is it better to play the Death Touch Menace? Oh. Okay. So Death Touch Menace or Three Power Flyer. I'm gonna go with probably Death Touch Menace. Why did they not block with the Myconid? So they have either something they need to fix the color for, or they had an 8 drop? Well, 8 drop's a possibility. They could be about to seek out 5 creatures. <sighs> yeah, this certainly looks a lot like they held back the owl bear because of arcane archery, huh? I don't believe I want to attack with Null Hunting Party here. It feels like too much of a trick. It was! It was a trick! Look at that! So now I need to survive against Dread Linaworm attacking next turn, which currently I can do if they don't have anything else. So I'm dead to a removal spell to the hunting party. Pilgrim's Eye doesn't really change this math in any way, but attacking with Pilgrim's Eye means that... Arcan Archery kills me. Removal spell for the hunting party kills me. I believe it's better to attack with the Pilgrim's Eye so that a reach or removal spell that hits a flyer doesn't kill me. Pretty close. My fate is not in my hands. Yeah, all right. Well, we're blocking the linworm. That's a good sign. Owlbear Shepherd's a good sign. My card to go sideways. I really want them to Arcane Archery that they top-decked off the Owlbear Shepherd to kill one of my flyers and not have lethal, and like validate all of my decisions to the maximum possible amount. <laughs> they need two things. Here they need two things. Previous turn they did not need two things. They needed far less than two things. <laughs> Whew, alright. 